the most memorable part of 2023? If you are so brave. For me, it was to go to Seattle with the majority of the group to go watch Les Mis. Oh, Les Mis. That was a fun I think trip. it was mm -hmm. not only just a fun thing for us all to do together, but mm -hmm. I really feel like it was kind of the building of a culture to, I guess, just learn to be around each other and enjoy mm -hmm. the things of life and kind of see the Lord through even something as <coughs> simple as a play, mm -hmm. which I just really enjoyed the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Very special. Anybody else think they have something that was memorable or super impactful or just something the Lord showed them in 2023? Yeah, some people getting baptized. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, very much so. Okay, so my next question was, anybody have things that they are excited about? maybe overwhelmed about, curious about for the coming year, before ahead of us. Reading Lord of the Rings. Yeah? Exciting. Excited. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it myself. Do I? Excited, right? Yeah, that's an exciting. What are you most excited about in, in regard, because I know you know the story a lot, but maybe not in the detail that the book will give. So what excites you about that? Um, just the uh, way the book is structured in the books. Mm -hmm. I really admire that. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely on my list of people who have inspired me. <laughs> so, yeah, I agree. Anybody else? Things that they're curious about? or? Yeah, I think uh, 2023 was definitely a year of growth for mm -hmm. all of us. Uh, I think there's a, still a continual ramping up of that growth. Mm -hmm. uh, so to see that continue to flourish and get even... Even greater, uh, I'm excited for. Amen. Uh, and along with Caden, I'm excited to see mm -hmm. uh, you know, what the Lord has in store for Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in the past, even with great expectations, mm -hmm. it's not a book that I would necessarily enjoy by itself, mm -hmm. uh, but Justin was able to, or even just what the Lord showed me through that, mm -hmm. even I get at service level a boring book, mm -hmm. I got a lot out of it wow. and was able to just see see a lot of things that I wouldn't have picked up on myself. Mm. So. Yeah. Thank you, Justin, for your continued inspiration in many of those ways. So, um, well, like I said at the beginning, this is not my uh, forte, <laughs> speaking in front of a, a bunch of people, but um, I figured I would give a little bit of a testimony, if you will, of kind of what brought me to you know, the Lord's encouragement to share with you guys. Um, it was a couple weeks ago, and I was just chatting with Noah. Um, we were talking about uh, maybe even engagement for him in, in this setting. You know, he, he has been in the past some. Of course, he, he went through uh, being taught in the Culture Center as we started it out, and then has ebbed and flowed because of work and whatnot. Um, but in talking to him and just hearing his heart was was moved. Uh, it, it wasn't, you know, I think sometimes when we think of a, a move of the heart, we get emotional or we get overly excited. Sometimes we're moved to sadness. There's a lot of emotions. Um, in the case of, of communicating with Noah in, in that topic of, um, in, in that case was education and, and things in his heart and mind that he desired to share and to be um, engaged with you guys um, really, really moved my heart to to action, to want to um, come alongside him in his desire to, um, he didn't say these exact words, but this is what I took from it, was he wants to be an inspiration. He wants to be someone um, that isn't uh, just coming up and, and being a part of somebody's life just to teach them facts or to, to gain knowledge, but to truly be an inspiration. And then later that day, or just a couple of days later, I was uh, meeting with Cheryl, and we were just... We were talking about a lot of things, uh, to be super honest right now. I don't remember what all of them were. Um, but we, we were just kind of going back and forth, as you do in conversation, and, and talking about life, talking about things that God was doing in our lives, um, which we often do. And um, on the ride home, and, and I had talked a little bit with her about my conversation with Noah, and on the ride home, I just was, again, moved, but... Clearly, in that moment, I, I could sense that I was moved by the Lord in the ways that he inspires us 
through others. And like I said a second ago, I, I don't fully recall all the things that Cheryl and I discussed, um, but it, it was like this realization, and I did text her while um, I was having these thoughts. I texted her and just encouraged her in what an inspiration she is to my life. And it's not, there. It, there's obviously times that we hear a, a, a teaching or we hear a song or we see something that inspires us to do something. But in that moment, I was inspired by the life that Cheryl has in the Lord. Um, and so that was kind of where my, my thoughts started spinning. Um, and you guys, being all of my children and all of you in this room, came to my mind in really considering what are the things that inspire us? What do we, um, what do we do with the things that inspire us? How do we act on those things? Um, so. I'm trying to, trying to stay to my notes here, so I will uh, not miss too much. But um, I have a couple definitions here. I'm not going to read through all of them. But um, inspire means to fill someone with the urge or the desire to do something or to fill something, especially to do something creative or take on a challenge. When I was also looking up uh, a definition of inspiration, um, it, it, was, it was labeled inspiration through art. But this, this also came to me. It's the Latin word, which I'll probably say it wrong, but like inspire, I don't know how you pronounce it, but meaning to breathe into. That's where the word inspiration comes from, to breathe into, which I thought was a beautiful picture of how when we are inspired or when we inspired others, it can bring life. Um, so this is a little bit more wordy of a definition, but, but listen with me and, and flow with me. Um, a divine influence or action on a person believed to qualify him or her to receive and communicate sacred revelation. So that's, that's really wordy, but some really, I think, poignant words to what inspiration really is um, when, we're, when it's good inspiration. And there, I mean, we'll get to this, but there is bad inspiration too that we, I think, sometimes don't really even recognize unless we're thinking about it or paying attention to it. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to do. Um, and some things that I've kind of just been thinking through is to kind of go through types of inspiration, if you will. Um, because I, I think that's, that's my hope for today. Like, you know, I don't, I don't have my, <laughs> my idea that my TED Talk up here is going to, uh, you know, be super knowledgeable by any means, but I, my hope is for you guys what to take away from it is a chance and an opportunity to reflect on your own lives and um, use some things that, that I feel even as a 43-year-old grown woman has the opportunity to do as well. If we don't really ever, we shouldn't ever lose that desire in our life to really reflect on what's going on, how the Lord is moving us and working in us. Um, so two of the different kind of, I guess you could say, types of inspiration that we can encounter. Um, the first being relational inspiration. Those, hopefully, that are God-ordained relationships in our lives. We could probably think of people very quickly in our lives that we know and love and um, have a relationship, as Justin was sharing, the importance of what is going on here the relationships that we have in our lives that make an impact or inspire us to be a certain way. Um, obviously, I use my example of my own son and my good friend and could give a lot of examples of pretty much every single one of you in this room and those that are connected to you of how you've been a, an amazing inspiration to my life. Um, and so I wanted you just to kind of consider that as you think about maybe you haven't really, or maybe you don't often think about how siblings, your household, parents, siblings, and those that you're very close to, how they inspire you, or those that you have not maybe spent time with in a long time, you know, either grandparents, or maybe some of you have moved, we've all, a lot of us have moved from other states, there's people that we grew up with that we might not see today, but we could definitely think back and know, I was very inspired by that person in my life. Um, the others that the God has given us, I believe in scripture, there's no, we don't 
right at this moment know them, um, but they are our brothers and sisters in Christ that we can relate to because of that, because of our connection to them. Um, and I, I hope that there are many of you that have been inspired by those, obviously, our Lord and Jesus Christ. We should desire to be inspired by his life, um, those that followed him, and those that, they're, that are written about in Scripture um, are very much a, a God-ordained inspiration that we should be seeking for. There are others, and I mentioned when you said your excitement about Tolkien. Tolkien is someone that I do not know, um, and he is not with us any longer, but um, one of those people that I would never you know, think initially, oh, that person actually really inspired me, but his writings were something and have been something that have been an inspiration to me um, and many other brothers and sisters in Christ that are no longer with us. Oswald Chambers, um, uh, Elizabeth Elliot, and um, Derek Prince are some of those that God has used in my personal life and walk in the Lord that has been a huge inspiration to me. Um, and though, like I said before, those people I don't walk life with in person like I do uh, many others, but they are people that I believe God has given to many of us to inspire us. Um, then, in contrast to that, I thought of ways that we may be inspired by unrelated situations or people or things, circumstances. Um, and so I was just going to list some of those. As a kid, <laughs> for me, it would have been commercials and TV shows, you know, things that I saw with my eyes. Um, and many times, you know, could be inspired to act a certain way or dress a certain way or... Commercials would make me hungry because I saw something that looked tasty and I wanted to eat it So I was inspired to you know eat that thing or get that thing or a lot of uh, well, We all know hopefully what commercials are for which is To make money on something because they inspire you to want that thing um, Music and books those things can definitely be something that God ordains for us to read or to hear but on the on the opposite side sometimes like I mentioned before could be a negative inspiration, something that may not be a, a good a, a good way to to fill our hearts and minds, and can inspire us in not maybe the best ways. Um, the other one, which uh, it wasn't around when I was a kid, uh, but like podcasts and and social media, um, those are very much things that are used today uh, that that are very prevalent, and many of us can have access to. I don't know if any of you thought about or even know that people on social media that are have very popular, do you all know what they're called? Anybody know? Like a title that they have? Like an influencer? Right. So what is that? That word very much comes alongside inspiration, right? They're called an influencer because they actually make money like commercials used to do to tell you about what they do and how they use it and how much they appreciate it and then in order to influence you to buy it or to use it. Um, and again, I want to preface that that's not always a negative thing, but often it's something we need to reflect upon and really consider is, is this person that I, I look up to or think is really great that I don't know, right? Because you can't really know people <laughs> behind a screen very well. Um, is that somebody that I want to be encouraged or inspired by? Um, and so I think it's just important. I, I was chatting with um, Kayla not too long ago, and she said something in a certain way in a tone of voice, and it sounded just like <coughs> Esther. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, that's hilarious. You and Esther sound exactly the same when y'all say this, talk this way, or whatever. And I say that as, like, obviously those that we spend time with, and whether we even recognize we're inspired by, we start to act like, we start to think like, we start to do the things that they do. And those things, when we love each other and know that that person loves the Lord and loves, wants good things for their life, that's, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> um, but there's certainly times that we need to, again, reflect and recognize, why am I talking this way? Why do I choose to respond this way or uh, make this joke or, you know, really start to think about how and what is inspiring us? Um, Brother Emmanuel was talking at our last Seven Spirits meeting, and he reminded me of um, 
this, the seven senses, which uh, somebody raise their hand and tell me what the five senses are that we all kind of know and think of. Benji, what are the five senses that mm -hmm. are pretty common to all of us? Taste, <coughs> smell, mm -hmm. feel, uh, hear. And see. Oh, I see. Yeah. Perfect. So those are the five that are our physical senses and the two that Emmanuel added um, for me. I mean, I, I, I just hadn't always thought in this way. I'd heard it before, but the all the physical senses along with how we think and how we feel and our emotions. And I think that's super important as we talk about inspiration and what I was just saying, how, how in life we can respond or act or be a certain way by whom we're inspired by. And on the way here, the Lord reminded me of um, the saying, uh, and if, I hope many of you have heard it, that the eyes are the window to your soul. Have, have any of you or most of you heard that saying? I think it goes both ways, and maybe all of you know this, but it was just a beautiful reminder to me. Um, many times when we think the eyes are the window to the soul, you think about, you see somebody, and if you know them really well, you can tell something's going on just by their eyes. Just We can think of the obvious things. When you're crying, <laughs> you know somebody's sad. When your eyes are lifted and high, you know somebody's happy. When you're worried, you know all the faces. I'm thinking emojis right now. Um, but all the faces we can make that can show what's going on in somebody's heart and soul. On that flip side, as any window that's clean, if you can see out of, if you can see into it, see it's clear, you can see into someone's soul, think about what happens with what you're seeing outside. When, when your window, your eyes are seeing and viewing something, considering something, it affects your soul. And so that was kind of the the dichotomy I wanted to make is how important what our eyes see, how it affects us, and how we allow it to affect us. And so I think that goes along with when we are constantly viewing something, how is it affecting our soul? And, and, and ultimately, how is it inspiring us? Um, so, for I don't want anybody to answer right now, but I would like you just to take a few minutes to think about someone in your life or a person or even a, a, excuse me, a situation that has inspired you recently. And so what, what did we say inspiration was? To fill someone with the urge or the desire to do something or fill something, to, to be creative or to take on a challenge or even just to, I, I feel like I want to really take home what is something that makes you want to to do good things and even more so what are what are things you can think of that people and situations that have inspired you to change and to be a better person in your life though those are things I really want you to just take a few minutes to think about um, because when we're inspired what happens next hopefully when we're inspired we're hopefully motivated we're hopefully driven to do something and, it, and let me give another dichotomy or dip, uh, two types of motivation we have maybe momentary or motivation or excuse me inspirations that encourage us to cook a meal something like I said before I, I could watch a commercial or today I can watch somebody cook a meal online and be like oh yeah I'm gonna make that I'm inspired to cook that I can watch somebody um, you know, have a cute outfit that I want to, oh yeah, I'm inspired to do this or have this haircut. I'm just using <laughs> examples of maybe momentary um, inspiration or there is an, a, a different inspiration in a life-changing way. I was remembering this morning that before Tim and I were even engaged to be married, we were dating each other, but he and I were still, you know, waiting on the Lord to hear what direction we would take our relationship. And I was 18 and graduated high school and had heard of some great adventure to go be with a, a ministry called YWAM. And uh, in this case, it was going to be going to Montana for six months. And then you go and go on another longer trip in a, over another country in Nepal was where they were going to go. And I, I, was, I was trying to remember exactly, and Tim couldn't recall either, it has been a few years, um, but our conversation and how, and our, I remember it as if it was like, I remember where I was, I just can't remember all the words, but <laughs> basically Tim really encouraged me to stay home, to not, 
to not take that venture in what I believe and thinking about it today, that could have been a very life altering decision for me to, to be engaged in such a way for such a long period of time. And that was somebody, again, I, I was in a, a serious, you know, close relationship with Tim, but he, he wasn't at that point my fiance or, you know, my parent or, you know, people that I would have maybe originally been more prone to listen to and, and be encouraged by. Um, so I say that to say, you know, obviously the Lord had a different plan. Um, but those are the two types of, you know, really momentary, but even obviously inspiration can be something that, that can change our lives forever. Um, I, ooh, oh, I, I shared some of my experiences there. Um, of course, and I want to just reiterate what Justin said even before I, I spoke, is how much our desire here for you guys in this center and in our times, yes, on Mondays, certainly, but extended in how we relate and do life together is certainly something that we would hope would be an inspiration to you and not as fun as it is to, to read literature and as helpful as it is to read and know history. Of course, the Bible studies are on a, a level of their own and we want to be enriched and given truth uh, and knowledge about the word of God and be inspired in such a way. But that really is the hope and the desire of our hearts for this time and this, this season that we have you, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. And it's a very short season um, in regard to the span of life. And um, it is our hope and desire to not take that lightly or to, to miss the opportunity that we have to invest in your lives and I don't want to, I'd be amiss to say that you guys are not a huge encouragement and um, uplift to each and one, one of these adults in this room and how you are searching after God and seeking after the Lord. Um, and of course, inspiring us and one another. Um, the other thing that I was encouraged, and it's been a while, um, but when we think about inspiration, and we think about what, what I said before, like if we're inspired by something, then hopefully we're also motivated to do something with our, with our lives. And um, another, not to, I don't want to get off on a whole other topic, but if we're motivated to do something, sometimes we might need some discipline to, to fulfill those things that we are motivated to do. And um, that may come with, discipline is not always particularly, and by discipline I mean sticking with something, something that we know for the greater good or for to accomplish something. We might have to do something we don't always want to do. Um, we might have to get up early, and maybe we're not used to getting up early, and we know that we have some good things that we want to get done, and it would really be helpful to us, but in order to get up earlier, what should we do? Maybe be helpful to do. Go to bed earlier. You know, that'll help us get more sleep so that when we're working to discipline ourselves, we're not as tired. If, you know, so that's a very simple uh, way to look at it. Uh, there are many more things um, that we should obviously discipline ourselves to do. But my main, my main encouragement in that is not just so we can better ourselves. Um, Again, when I was speaking with Cheryl recently, we, I was reminded of a vision that our sister Kim had. It's been a while ago, but to make it, to just simply uh, address what the vision was, it was a picture of a beehive, and the bees were busily going about their business and taking care of what bees have to take care of, getting to their flowers and bringing it back and creating the honey that, that nourishes. And so, the picture that Kim got came away with was that all the bees had a different job. All the bees took place doing different, taking pollen from different flowers and working differently in the hive. If one of those bees negated their responsibility, their, or you want to say, we're not disciplined bees, um, and taking the time and the effort to do their task, then the hive was affected. The honey was affected. And so that, that's what I hope for you guys as you're reflecting and thinking of what inspires you in addition to how you want to go about and be encouraged to be motivated through that inspiration is to really consider how important that is, not just for your own life, but for those in this room 
and those that God has placed in your life. That motivation shouldn't just be to better yourself, but to better your families and the family of God, because God has been very specific in the purpose and the plan that he has for us. Yes, individually, as we grow in him, but also what his strength and unity does for us as a body of Christ and how when we come together and when we're not fruitlessly spending our time or, of course, when we're not being uh, a discouragement or doing things that would, would hurt others, I mean, that's obvious, but when we're coming together with a desire to be a love and a change and to obviously grow in our relationship with the Lord, that heavily impacts our relationship as a body of Christ. Um, so, um, I'm just going to read these couple things so that I don't miss out, but we're almost done. So, um, God wants to inspire us with his word, his written and his living word. When we don't have a relationship with the Father, we miss out on that true living inspiration. His goal is to shine through his people and to shine his glory and his beauty. To fall in love with him as the creator as we are inspired by each other and all of our uniqueness. So, you know, I think it's important to, yes, recognize even some simple things in life that really inspire us. But the, the, the heart and the goal of that is to really recognize how God wants to inspire us through his Holy Spirit and to really relate to us because it is the absolute joy and cry of his heart that he can relate to his children. And I think that is such a beautiful, beautiful picture of the Father's love for us that he gives us, of course, his creation to, to hopefully inspire us when we are looking for it. And he gives us one another to, to bring inspiration and to bring his love. Um, so the other small, I have an action item for you, and I don't know, we haven't talked much about if there will be an assignment in the future about inspiration, but I'll let you leave that. This is, um, oh, when I talked about discipline a little bit, did you bring that to show, or do you want to show it? Um, Ms. Cheryl had a great reminder of, um, I, have, have all of you guys heard 21 days to build a habit? Has any, I mean, that's, anybody ever heard that before? Anyway, it is, I don't know, scientific study yes, of yes you know that if for 21 days you set aside a, a discipline or a a hope that you can accomplish a good habit and maybe somebody maybe some people use it to break a bad habit I think it can work either way but um, in this case uh, we're talking about building a good habit and so I was just letting Esther's been doing that to work on getting up earlier in the day so she may just I mean you don't have to do this and I have given you one it's just a little chart with little circles that she fills out just as a you know those sticker charts that you guys all love and use no um, I to, still put stickers on my Ms. Cheryl still put stickers Mine's on her stickers. Nice. so this is just I just um, with Cheryl's help made a little worksheet for you guys to take with you. And on the front, it has some of the definitions of inspiration. I'll let you guys start passing those out, actually. Um, and then I asked you a few questions, one of which is that just to take time to ask the Lord how he wants to inspire you to grow, and then to ask yourself, how am I inspiring those around me? I think it's really important that we, we start to, to con of course, think about how we love others. One thing that I know you've probably all heard this, but we remind our kids every once in a while to think before you speak. Naomi, do you remember the THINK? What the, the acronym for THINK? All the, for each letter. No. So THINK is thoughtful, is what you're going to say thoughtful. H is helpful. helpful. I inspirational. Nice, that fits in. Is it inspirational? Is, is it, it necessary? Necessary. And the last one, K? Is it kind? Yes. It's guessing. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so those are all, those are a lot to remember. So maybe I'll send that out. But as far as like, a lot of times inspiration is not just like Miss Lede, who's an amazing artist, and every time I see her art, I want to go be a better artist. It's not, it doesn't always have to be that kind of inspiration. It can simply be what do we choose to say, and how do we choose to say it to those that we... Remind 
The cooking, yes. yes. Every time Emmanuel cooks for me, I want to learn how to cook better Asian food so that Elijah can be happy because he loves Asian food. Yeah. But there, it's not always that, it doesn't have to be that difficult. Literally just thinking before we speak can change somebody's life and can change somebody's perspective of life. And so we really need to, this is a whole other topic, which we won't get into, but the power of our words is not something to be missed. So ask God how he wants to inspire you and ask yourself, how am I inspiring people around me? And then write down some, one of the first people you think of that has inspired or does inspire you. And don't stop with one person. Who or what has inspired you recently? So continue that thought. And then I want you to kind of take some time to... Um, Think about how these people or, experience, or circumstances have been inspiration. How, how has it inspired you and what has it inspired you to do? Um, and then the 21 days, is, and so you have a chart on the back, um, and the examples are in the paragraph below. Use the next 21 days to really open your eyes to how God wants to inspire you through, like I said before, his creation. Obviously, more importantly, through relationships around you. I even wrote, you know, things like I mentioned earlier about videos or images that you see that, that make you have a desire to cook a meal or create art, music. Many of you are very musical in this room. Really start to recognize what brings that urge into your heart and mind. I don't think it would be amiss to also really reflect on when you notice a bad pattern or habit in your life, what brought me to that place? Why, why am I feeling this desire to not be kind to my sibling? Or, I don't know, I'm, you know, there's many things. Or to not want to build a better habit or, you know, all the things that we might not even really think about that brings us to um, a, a greater understanding of how we are inspired. So, more so, I was hoping that the, 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 the 21 days will just open our eyes to the beauty of the Lord and how he inspires us, as well as maybe maybe it's simple and maybe it's not. Maybe there's some really, some of these examples or how we noticed the way that someone prayed for us was a, a, a leading by the Holy Spirit to pray over us. That's not a small thing. And I certainly know that God wants us to recognize those things so that we can walk greater and more fully in that. Um, so, I'm trying to think about that. anything. So each day, fill in. Yeah, so the 21 days is for you to fill in and have a visual of, you know, and if there's a better way, if you like doing that on your phone, but uh, this was just a nice, tangible way to do that. Um, and I'll definitely be checking in on how you're doing. I Obviously, I think all of us would love to hear, but it's certainly not um, mandatory that you share with everyone. But I do think it's, it, it's an inspiration <laughs> when you are seeing the ways that God wants to speak to you and inspire you. So please don't hesitate to share on, on our text group or um, even in class if it comes up with Mr. Justin. Um, so that is what that is for, and I hope that it is a useful tool of reflection. Um, and bless the Lord. Thank you guys so much for letting me share, and... Um, and thank you for inspiring me, because each one of you are a great inspiration to me in your life, and what he's doing in you and what he does through you is uh, beyond beautiful. And so I am so grateful for it. Um, and I will pray to close us. Father, we, um, we are so blessed by your presence, Lord, by the goodness and the faithfulness, Lord, that you pour into us. Lord, as we come to you, Father, and desire to, to hear your voice, Lord, and to be led by you. Lord, I pray for each heart in this room, young and old, that the, the inspiration of your Son, Lord, of the Holy Spirit, that is so rich, so desiring to, to move us and to change us, Lord. I pray that each heart in this room would truly be changed, Lord, to, to glorify you, Lord, to bring honor and um, to reveal your goodness, Lord, and your greatness, Lord, that your light would truly shine through our eyes, Lord, that that window of your life in us would be the reflection that everyone sees. I pray that there would be hearts that are encouraged and lifted up, Lord, that are 
um, motivated to do good things, Father, for you and for others, Lord, and um, just to to bring life in fullness, Father, for this world, we we don't have much, <laughs> really nothing at all, Lord, but in our lives with you, we have everything we need, and so I pray that um, you would continue to reveal that to each one of us. We each need to be reminded uh, that our life in you is is greater than all other things, Father. And so um, I pray for the rest of this day, Father, that as we turn our hearts to you and want to hear your voice, Lord, would you bring clarity, uh, knowledge, and wisdom. We bless your holy name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys.